Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and I've got a tutorial for us today that was a request to show you how to make a junk journal with a hidden spine. And so what that means is how to make one where the spine and where you sew in the signatures is not exposed. So I tend to make a lot of what we call exposed spined journals. Um, I like that style. I think they look fun. I enjoy seeing, you know, the um, where we sew the signatures in. However, that's of course just one option. <laughs> and um, there's lots of different ways to do all of these options. But when you're actually working in the journal or looking at the journal, you don't really notice anything that different. Um, what once you've opened it up, it's just how does it look on the outside and how is it constructed? So I'm going to set those aside and I'm going to use for the journal I'm going to assemble today, um, the, what the, the cover, <laughs> the cover from a reader's digest. And this one, let me pull out the guts in my excitement to prepare for the video. I went ahead and removed the guts and realized I'm going to show you guys how to do that in case you want to use a book for your cover. So this reader's digest was from 1954 and the cover and the paper inside actually is in really good shape. So I'm really excited about using it. Um, so this is one option. You can, you know, find an old book, pull the guts out, and it gives it lots of character, right, to use that for the cover of your journal. Um, but you can also make a cover similar to some of the other tutorials I've done where you can use um, book board, chipboard, um, you know, layers of cereal boxes, cracker boxes, whatever, and, and make yourself a, an actual cover. So again, you're not limited to using a book when you are doing um, a hidden spine journal. In fact, I realized the ones I've shown you, the examples have all been from book covers. So let me show you one. This is an older one that I've made and I've gotten a lot better since then, but this one I made the cover myself. So you can see, and again, it only has one signature, but it's a hidden, a hidden spine. Okay, um, I don't wanna show you that one too much because it's not very pretty. <laughs> and I probably have some others around. I just don't make that many of them. Okay, so for this, tutorial we are going to use an old book and I'm using these Reader's Digest condensed books and this one has more of a yellow color and it's pretty too. I'll decide which one we'll use in the video here in a minute. Let's see what year this one is from. Just because I'm curious this one is 1975 so it's a little bit um, not quite as old but it, it's still getting up there. It's about 50 years old. Okay. So you do need an X-Acto knife. And when you're working with these, the, the one I did off camera was actually a lot easier because it was older and everything was kind of already coming a little bit loose. But I'm hoping you guys are gonna be able to see what I'm talking about here. We're gonna wanna slice through this paper with our X-Acto knife and be careful because we, what we don't want to do, we can fix it if we do, but what we don't want to do, hopefully, is cut through this cover back here. So, I don't know if you guys can even see what I'm doing. I'm just running my X-Acto knife right through um, where that paper was. And um, these have a little bit of the kind of meshy, uh, I guess, reinforcement glued in. So that's there too. And your X-Acto knife should go right through it. It's easier for me if I stand it up like I keep trying to default to. And then I realize you guys can't see what I'm doing. Um, but again, it's not hard. And depending on the book, sometimes it's super easy. But it's, it's never really difficult. This one has quite a bit of adhesive that I'm having to cut through but it worked out. And then you just have all this wonderful paper you can then use um, in your projects and to make pockets and all kinds of book page crafts with. So 
have at it. Um, all right, and this one's actually really pretty. I love the gold colors because it is the fall right now. I picked out this pink. Um, let me show you the papers. I've already, oops, gotten my signatures ready to go. Um, and I was just thinking the pink and the green would be kind of fun, but the pink and the gold is really pretty too, isn't it? Kind of for fall. Um, and after I get them sewn in, I'll show you some of the papers that I used for the signatures. I used a couple of the kits by Sylvia um, at Las Mimis Amores Printables on Etsy. Um, I'm on her design team, and this is two of her kits for October 2024. I've already done a journal and a project with these papers, but I really like them. One kit's called Fragile, and the other one is She. So I'll link that for you in the description in case you want to go look at them. But then I also used some book page. I used some of her papers, um, really pretty, just to make my signatures, and then some scrapbook paper. So, hmm, you know what? I think I'm gonna use the gold one. Am I, am I gonna use the gold one? I don't know. Why am I perseverating on this? The pink is kind of fun. It's a difference, and it's a surprise, and then I did like the this kind of sagey green. You know, I'm going to go with what I had planned. I'll make something with this one later. That was a hard decision. Um, if you guys completely disagreed with that choice, um, <laughs> you can let me know in the comments. So, uh, make sure you give the video a thumbs up, and um, leave me a comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. There, I got that out of the way. Okay, so what you're going to need to make your, to, to put your journal together is a lot of times I will, in fact, I did on this one, I will add fabric, some kind of fabric to reinforce this spine and to make sure everything's okay. I'm telling you guys, this one is in such good shape. This canvas, there's no deterioration. I think it's gonna be fine, so I'm not gonna worry about doing the fabric today. But I am, this was part of, um, the uh, what, are, what are these called? So let me grab the, the guts again. So there's these pages that in for this particular book um, type, they used matching paper to glue onto the cover. And then this is the front of the book. And then this one was on the back and I ripped it. I didn't do a good job when I was taking the guts out and it ripped. But I'm thinking I'm going to use it because I think it'll look really interesting just to cover up this, all of this kind of extra. And again, a lot of times I would use fabric, but I'm going to use this piece of paper and we're going to just work it in there really good and cover this up. And we're going to see kind of, and it's all going to be glued down. And we're going to see that little bit of torn edge. And I think it's going to look interesting. So we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. But you, you want something probably to cover this up because what we are going to do is we are going to make a spine. And I'm going to walk you through how to do this. We're going to sew the signatures to the spine and then it's going to sit down in here. It's going to be covered with this pretty paper. It's going to sit down in here but I don't really, I don't want to see these edges. It's a junk journal. It wouldn't be a bad thing to see those edges. You don't really even have to cover this, but I kind of want mine to have more of that finished look. So we are going to, we're going to do that. We're going to cover it. You can use, if yours needs to be reinforced or you're worried about it, use, use some like a old pillowcase, um, some linen, some things like that. Guys, look at my hands. I've been having a little bit, um, I was cleaning the rollers on my printer and um, I just made a little bit of a mess today on my hands. I am going to switch it up just a little bit and I'm going to use some art glitter glue. Um, simply, you know what, I'm not. I'm going to actually use my Lime Co because I really do want to use the, the book binding glue. I just thought about that. I had just filled up the art glitter glue, and that's why it was right there. And I said, I'm going to switch it up. Okay, so I'm using my Lime Co brand PVA glue that does, one of the things it talks about is it stays flexible. And when you are kind of working with books and putting books together or back together, I think it's a good, a good choice. And it's my everyday go-to glue, and I love it, so... Um, I'm just kind of gluing this down 
getting it so it's as smooth as it can be before I start layering that other piece of paper on there. All right, and I'm gonna want to make sure I am generous with my glue. And that's one thing too about this versus the art glitter, which I was about to pick up, is the art glitter glue dries significantly faster. You know, it grabs quick, which is great, especially like when you're on camera. But I need to lay down quite a bit of glue and I'm using this little precision tip nozzle, which is fine, but it gives me a little more time. And I'm just gonna add a little extra right in here where I know I'm gonna wanna work it in really good. Okay, we'll see how we do. I'm just kind of eyeballing about where I want it. I kind of want this torn edge. I'm not, I'm not worrying about this being centered. I kind of like the idea of it being off-centered and really get this torn edge in there. And I'm going to do my best to get this really worked in here. And this is where working with a glue that gives me a little bit of time is a good thing because I don't want it bubbled up if I can help it. And it's bubbling on me. So I'm just gonna keep working at it. Okay. And once we get everything sewn in, and once we um, add pockets and do all of those things, you're not really gonna notice. I am noticing on this cover, and again, it's old. I think I said it was from 54, 1954. The corners are showing, you know, where, and that's okay. I may decide later on this one, depending on what I end up doing with this journal, I might put some corner covers on here to protect them a little bit, or I may just leave it looking nice and old, which is a look that I like. Okay, we are gonna set this aside to just dry, um, and ke or keep drying while I work on the signatures. So, I decided for this journal, I'm gonna have three signatures, and each of these has, th these are, it's gonna be a big journal, 15, pages so that means there's actually like when you the way you count pages there's then 30 right so 30 60 90 pages it's, it's going to be a big a big journal um and i decided the height and the width of my pages based on my cover right so it's just like kind of any other journal we were putting together i kind of like my pages to be a little um shorter so that I can have things hanging off and if they come past the cover, that's okay, but I might even be able to have little tabs and things that you see when you open it up. Um, let's see, what else do I wanna tell you about this? Okay, so you do have to figure out how wide and tall to make the spine piece. And like I said, it is gonna sit right in here, okay? And this one, what you do is you, you, you work it in here to figure out your measurement. So mine ended up being one and five eighths by seven and three eighths. That's what fit in here perfectly. Okay, I hope you guys can see that. All right, so again, we're gonna set this aside and I want mine to look pretty. So I'm gonna cover it with a coordinating piece that I'm using for my signature covers of, of scrapbook paper. So I'm having two that was this pattern of paper and one it looks kind of like these stars. So I decided to cover this with the stars since I just had the one. And you, you just want it big enough to wrap around. Again, whatever book you use is gonna determine or whatever size you make your cover is what's gonna determine what size you need. But for a reference point, my piece of paper I'm gonna wrap with is eight and a quarter inches by four inches. Okay, and see how it fits in there? We're gonna wrap this up like a little present. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to glue it down. Now this is just some chipboard. I did glue two pieces together because it's not super thick chipboard. It's probably, it feels like, um, like, you know, a cereal box or something. 
and the chipboard that I have, it is um, in my Amazon shop, which I'll have linked for you in the description. It's an affiliate link. You guys know the drill by now. That means if you do um, click on it, make a purchase, Amazon gives me a few pennies. It's no cost to you, but we are supposed to disclose that. So it's just a way Amazon, I guess, tries to help us the, or people, creators, whoever, that um, send them traffic, right? <laughs> Like they need my help, probably not. Um, but anyway, that's what's that for. I like to do it so you guys can see the tools and the things that I like to use. Like this little corner miter tool is one of my favorites. It's not necessary, but I make a lot of journals and I like to um, it just make sure I don't cut too close to the corner and everything fits together nicely. All right, I'm going to take my bone folder. This is nice and thick and sturdy, and I'm just going to score along the chipboard onto that scrap paper because this is pretty thick. This is not a thin, like, wrapping paper or copy paper or weight paper. It's it's like a cardstock weight. So that will help me get this nice and crisp. And you probably, hopefully, I, this isn't too thick. I didn't really think about that. Um, you you want to think about if it's going to add bulk to your spine. So before I glue this, and don't worry that it's not coming together. You're not going to see this side. This is the side that's going to later glue into the cover of the journal. Um, I'm just kind of squeegeeing. Squeegeeing. Is that a word? I'm just nudging these little corners over just a little bit. I can hear my sweet husband. He is in the laundry room doing laundry. Isn't he a good man <laughs> while I'm crafting? Okay. All right. Let's just make sure it didn't get too big. It didn't. But if, if this will not sit in that cover nice and secure and snug, you want to rethink what you're doing. Get a thinner piece of paper, only use one piece of chipboard, whatever it is you have to do so that it fits nicely. You don't want it um, where the cover, where it won't fit. Otherwise, your journal will not close correctly. This is the best way to put that. All right, I am going to glue these down. And again, this is what we are going to sew the actual signatures to. Um, and again, you can make yours decorated pretty, whatever you want. You could have just left it the plain chipboard. And again, depending on the color, the style of your journal, that might be what you want to do. A lot of times I don't cover these. All right, let the glue hold. And again, you're not going to see this side, but if this bothers you, you could have made the wrapping piece of paper. Um, longer this way. This is just the piece that I had, a piece that I had left, and I didn't want to cut another piece of scrap of paper up because this is the side you're going to see. You're not going to see the back side. Okay. Now, I'm going to use a pencil because I've got to decide which end is the top and which is the bottom, and I don't want to get confused. So I'm going to put a tiny T right there that I know if I can see it after I sew in the signatures, we'll just erase it. But I don't want to get this turned around and upside down. All right, you need this just copy weight paper, and you need it to be the same exact size as your spine strip. So again, this was one and... um. What did I say it was? It was one and I wrote it down somewhere else too so that if this happened to me, it's one and five eighths by seven and three eighths. Is that right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, one and five eighths by seven and three eighths, okay? So it's the exact same size before I wrapped it. <laughs> okay, all we're gonna do with this piece is we are gonna fold it in half dog style so long way and be nice and neat because this is going to be our lines that help us know where to sew in our signature okay so 
I'll, I'll draw a line on this here in a second so you guys can see it, but you fold it in half and then I'm gonna fold it in half again. And if you don't wanna fold it in half again, if that's too hard, you could just take the edge and fold it to the middle crease line and then this edge and fold it to the middle crease line, it does the same thing. Okay, in fact, I'll just use a little ink. Hopefully that'll work. Sometimes it's hard to ink really thin paper, but that way you can see the score lines. And then we are going to do a little bit more folding for our template. And I've shown you guys how to make these templates before, but if you're new to my channel or new to making journals, it does not hurt to have a refresher. Um, but if you're more interested in how we're going to get the spine sewn in, you can fast forward if you'd like to. <laughs> okay, so this is our template. Now we need to fold it in half this way. So again, be nice and neat because we want to get the center. That's going to be our center hole. And then I just eyeball it. I'm going to bring this one down that much. Just fold it in half, both layers. That way they're the same. So we're going to have the same distance from the top and the bottom for our, so one, two, three for our three holes, okay? Um, this is going to be a three hole pamphlet stitch. That's my kind of go-to. And again, I'm going to put a T on here. So I remember this is the top. That is important. Pam at the Paper Outpost taught me that. If you get these turned around, the signatures don't line up correctly. And I can show you some of my older journals um, where I did that. And it was frustrating. Okay, so just keep, keep the top to the top. And I have a little tiny T there. All right, now you need a paper piercer or an awl, something like that. I like to use this one. It's just easier for me to hold. And we are going to add our holes to our spine. So you just wanna line it up on there perfectly. And we're gonna start poking holes. Now what I do is, and, and there's three holes on each of these horizontal lines where they intersect. So one, two, three, and then three. And I don't worry about going all the way through. I just get a nice pierce as I go, and then later I'm gonna come back through and push this through in just a second. I'm more interested in holding this paper nice and secure, not letting it wiggle, and getting my nine <laughs> pin pricks where my holes are gonna be marked. Okay, so now set that aside. And I don't know if you guys can see them, but I can see them. Now I'm gonna just push all the way through it's just easier for me to do it this way. You do want to be careful. You do not want to push this paper piercer through your finger and poke yourself. All right, almost done. So with a three hole pamphlet stitch with the three signatures, it is nine holes. Okay. That looks good to me. And you guys have seen me do like my little golden book journals. I showed you here, I've got Santa's work toy shop here. Um, this one has five signatures. So I had to poke 15 holes, right? <laughs> okay, nine holes. Now let's get our signatures ready. I always double check that they're not upside down or anything's weird. I have them turned the way I want them. And I have these already in the order that I want them. I want this to be when you open the book, the first signature, the second, and the third. So I'm gonna keep them in order. But I'm gonna start with the first one. And I know this is the top because I've double checked that it's turned the way I want it. And now we're gonna just lay our template in here and I'm using these lines to help me again mark right in the fold where I'm gonna poke the hole. And I realize I did not ink this for you guys. 
but I, I actually don't want this inked in the middle, so I apologize. But trust me, I'm going right in the center. And this is a lot of paper to go through, so I'm just being patient, using a little bit of strength, and it goes through. But again, this is where it's important to make sure you keep this in the correct direction because otherwise you'll have to take your signature out and resew it. <laughs> okay, so that's signature one. And I'm gonna repeat this process for all three of the signatures. Um, just poke in the holes. There is a tool on Amazon that I have put on my Christmas wish list. My birthday is actually coming up too, but um, Christmas or birthday <laughs> um, that I want. And once I get it, then I will do a, a I'll review it or show you guys how to use it. But it's the cradle where you can put your signature in like this and the holes are already marked for you and you can punch it through. <laughs> And I'm thinking that might be something I need in my life. So anyway, it's on my wish list. We'll see if I get one. If I do, I'll tell you guys about it. I have made journals this way for so long. I'm not sure it's necessary or that I have to have it. But I was also thinking, I have a feeling it won't require quite as much hand strength. Um, I'm not sure. And as I'm getting a little older... Sometimes I think about that. I don't normally make my signatures quite this thick. Okay, but I did it. Now, these are going to be probably a little challenging to sew in being this thick, but we'll see how we do. All right, so let me find my needle. Uh oh, I was at my in person workshop yesterday. And I took, and I don't think I came home with my favorite needle. Oh, goodness. Wait, this might be it. Is this it? Did you make it home? All right, this might be it. But I usually have these turned a certain way in here, so I know which ones are my favorites. But they, I shared them, which is what you do at a workshop, right? We shared, and um, I didn't put them up the way I normally do. All right, we are going to, you know what? I had out some, I always use this waxed thread, which is great for book and journal making, but you can use like embroidery floss. And I just remembered this green. And I was thinking that might be pretty. Yeah, let's use that olive green color. And again, we're not gonna see it on the outside, but we'll see it when we open up the center of each of the signatures, there'll be some thread and that'll be a, a fun surprise too. All right, so I'm gonna use, you know, embroidery floss. If you guys, of course, are familiar with it, you can separate the strands. We are not going to separate the strands. If I can find the end, I am going to use all six of them together. Well, maybe this wasn't the best idea. There's probably a trick to finding the end, isn't there? I used to do so much cross, there it is. <laughs> I used to do so much cross stitching and I probably used to know that, but I've already forgotten it. And this one is already not pulling well, but that's all right. Okay, so again, I do three times the height, one, two, three, for each signature. So again, I have three signatures, so I need three pieces of string the same, the same height length length I think we're supposed to use the length when we're talking about how long a piece of string is all right ah. and if you guys haven't already checked out I know it came out several days ago but my new paper kit the Mary trees and stars I'm having so much fun with that I had planned at um, I'm doing a table at a kind of like a holiday make make and take um, here in town in December. And I had already planned, I hadn't done anything except say this is the project I'm gonna do. So it's not like I had 
gotten the papers or anything, but I had planned or thought about doing these paper stockings that are so cute, so I will probably do a video making those. Um, if you're interested, let me know. But um, we were, some of the ladies yesterday at the workshop were organizing that and planning that, and they were like, oh my gosh, I love these trees and stars. Let's make those instead. And there's going to be multiple stations. I'm not, like, my project isn't the only project, but now I'm kind of excited because we're going to make that um, at our little fun make and take day in December. All right, now it's the fun part. We are gonna sew. So again, I'm making sure I remember the top of my spine is here. I'm gonna pick up my first signature and I've threaded the needle and we are just gonna do a three pamphlet stitch onto here instead of onto a full cover when, like I do with the exposed spine, okay? So it's the same process. I'm gonna start inside middle hole and go to the middle hole, the first one on the left, and we are just gonna sew the signature to the spine. So I'm gonna come up again through the top hole that's in the correct line, and so it's the, the same stitch just onto the spine instead of the cover. Whoa, don't let the, don't let your tail pull through. There we go. And then skip the center, go through the bottom. Make sure you pick the right hole. It's looking correct so far. I do like this green paper, don't you guys? I think it's a fun this time of year color. It's almost November. So it's still fall. It's nice outside these days. I think it's gonna be a little cool this week here in Virginia. Um, but then towards the end of the week, we're gonna go back up into the high 70s. So it's gonna be a pretty week, I think. All right. Now, like always, I just double check. I got it in the correct holes. I didn't accidentally sew, sew off. I am pulling it snug. One end of the tail is to the right. The other is to the left and we're gonna tie our knots. So one, two, and then I just switch hands with the tails and three. And I'm gonna leave it long because I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with those yet. All right, now I'm gonna repeat the same process. We're just gonna fold over the pages. Here's where you can see the pretty papers. Um, I'm gonna repeat this for all three signatures. So if you wanna hang around to listen to me ramble, great. You wanna see me sew it in again. Um, maybe you're crafting with me and you wanna see that stitch again, great. If that's not your cup of tea, you know where your fast forward button is. And I'm gonna go back to what um, one of my lovely viewers shared with me that Tim Holt says on his videos. If you don't have something nice to say, find something nice to say. Um, because I know some people say, well, why didn't you just fast forward yourself? Why didn't you do that off camera and come back? And the simple answer, you may ask, <laughs> or to, or to, to your why question is I don't know how. Um, and maybe one day I will learn because I'm learning new things every day and I'm really working hard to get better with my business, but I don't know how yet. And I would rather make projects right now than learn more about the video editing and um, process. And I know that's probably something I need to take a class on or ask somebody who does it how to do it. But I haven't gotten there yet. Okay, so again, I started it in the center inside, center hole out, top. We're now almost to the point where we're gonna come back through, and I let my needle unthread, the center hole up into the center of the signature. Um, one thing that I wanted to point out, I don't know if you guys noticed, like I said, this, these are pretty thick. And to help me, again, 
push this needle through. I'm using my pad on my desk and I'm literally letting it do the work so my hands don't have to. Making sure the threads are underneath and on either side. All right. So I think I had shared in a video last week, I had a lovely talk with my father last week and um, it was very sweet after we talked, apparently he then texted my daughter, the one who's in New York <laughs> and talked to her, asking her about the gala that she went to. Um, she was, a, I think I told y'all about that too. Anyway, it was a work for her work, um, but in the field and with people, of course she would like to meet and be around. So it was all very exciting going to a gala in New York City. Um, but I just thought it was very sweet of him that he wanted to ask her about it and hear about it, not just from me, but from her. So she was so tickled. She called me yesterday morning and we had a long talk, which is always nice. So it's a great way to start my morning. So um, fun, fun things. And she doesn't get to see her grandfather very often again. He lives in Florida, and, you know, as these kids get older, we're going to sew in the last signature. And they they have their lives, and they're so busy, and then we're busy, and my dad doesn't um, like to come to travel um, when it's cold, which I don't blame him. <laughs> in Virginia, it still gets very cold here in the winter. And um, so anyway... She just doesn't see him as often, but it was very sweet that they, they connected and it wasn't just like on a birthday or Father's Day or something like that. So I thought that was fun. And that you guys might appreciate it too. All right, last one. We went through the center hole. Now we're coming up. Whoa, I don't know why. Do I have a little knot? I don't know. It was like giving me a little bit of resistance, but I pulled it through. <laughs> Skip the center, going through the top. All right, we're almost in. Now you see how this looks like when I do all those that I show you guys how to do with the exposed spine. That's what it's looking like, but it's gonna be hidden because we are gonna glue it into our journal cover. It's just another step. And again, it's not hard. It's just a personal preference. Um, and I like both, and I make both. I just tend to go towards the exposed spine look for some reason. All right, I think I've got it. I've got it now. Okay, put the needle away. And this is the part I always talk to you guys about, really making sure you've got this, this string on top. Everything looks good. We're gonna tie it up. So again, not hard, but um, definitely I didn't get it tied the first time, by the way, it slipped on me. Um, just a little different. And I only did three, so you didn't have to sit here and watch me So like five or seven. I think I did one one time that was like 12. <laughs> I'm like, this probably wasn't the best. I don't think I did that one on camera. I think I, got everything ready. I think I sewed a couple and then I did a part two. And when we came back, I had sewn them all in. I think that's how I did that um, to get around the not knowing how to edit the video. <laughs> I just said, we'll just have a part two. All right, isn't that pretty? So the papers I used, again, were the ones from Sylvia, Las Mimas Amores. And then I used um, Janet Marsh's uh, Nature Diary, some pages from that. That's this one here um, with these pretty florals. And then I used some from the Wings of Summer, which is a butterfly book that I love. Okay, I can still see my T. It's right there and I am gonna erase it. So I used a pencil, it's gone now. Um, I could have put it on the back. And then I wouldn't have had to worry about it. I could have written a T as big as I wanted to and we wouldn't see it, but I didn't think about that. All right, doesn't that look nice? It's nice and neat, everything's great. All right, we're gonna come back over here to our cover. I'm gonna make sure everything's lining up. 
Now this is actually gonna get glued to that, so it's not gonna be a curved spine, um, but it's gonna really sit down in there nice and snug and pretty. All right, so what do you need now? Now we are going to use some two-sided tape. We're gonna use some of the PVA wet white glue. And I think I'm gonna figure out a way to kind of clamp it together, but we'll, well, I'll figure that out in a second. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use um, the quarter inch because I wanna put a strip. Um, I'm actually gonna cover really this whole section um, as best I can, and then we're gonna add glue all on top of that. So I don't wanna accidentally stick my tape to this cover, so I'm gonna get it out. So you could use a wider two-sided tape if you want to. I am um, just thinking this one would fit nicely in between the threads, but it really doesn't matter, I don't think, if you cover them up. I think it would be okay. So maybe I'll grab some of this, this width too. And we'll just see, we'll just see what we do. All right, they're just different brands, but they're both good. They're both okay. So once I get these laid out, yeah, this will go quicker, so I won't have to put as many down. <laughs> Once I get these laid out, it actually worked perfectly. Three of these and one of those covered the whole back. Um, I'm going to, whoops, I didn't start it right at the top. I am going to burnish it down really well with my bone folder. And I'm trying not to mess all my pages up, but you just kind of have to wiggle it around and get it to work for you. Add that overlap a little bit. I'm gonna cut a little piece of tape and put right there here in a second because that is going to bother me. All right, so I'm gonna peel that up. Oh, well that's not good, Pam. Here, we'll use a little piece of this one since it's already unwound. We're gonna put it right there. Okay, so this is where you just, again, get them all peeled up. And I sometimes, like that one was a little overlapped, so it's not pushed down maybe as well as I would like it. What I do is I peel this strip up, and then I kind of just lay it back on there, make sure everything's laying down the way I want it to. Okay? And I think... Um, I use two kinds of adhesive. Why? Um, again, I think that's because <laughs> I watched other people a long time ago make their videos and that's how they did it. Um, I feel like the tape, when once this glue dries, the tape just gives it a little bit more adhesive, right? And a little more stick. But adding the glue on top of it allows us to have that wiggle factor when I'm putting it in there. If you don't add the glue on top, your choice, but once you stick it down, it's stuck, right? The paper to the paper, it, it's, it's done. And if we add this nice bit of glue on here, we have a moment or two if we need to adjust. And I like having that option, okay? All right, all kinds of glue on there. Again, I've erased my T, but I know my papers are the in the right direction now. Making sure my cover is in the right direction. Now, I, my goal is to nestle this right in there. Now, I before I spend a lot of time pushing it down, I just make sure that it is where I want it, and now we are going to spend time really pushing this spine into the cover. And I find it, you know, easier to push it if I kind of get in between each of these signatures. I can get this bone folder in there and very, uh, now careful, I don't want to tear the paper that I wrapped my spine with, but I'm really pushing it in there good. 
and of course on either side and see some of the glue comes up it's okay it's all right you just really want to make sure you have pushed this in and it is not going anywhere now I don't know how this is gonna work sometimes I can wiggle these on here I'm gonna take some binder clips and just at angles kind of clip it on here and what I normally do and I like these to be you know tight is of course you can also flip that down so it'll sit a little better um I'll leave this for hours or even overnight and then come back to it um but we just get it all clipped in so everybody's happy being friends hopefully and then I think I think it does better if you know I just keep kind of pushing but if you leave these up so a lot of times I will put something heavy this isn't heavy enough but on either side of it so maybe a stack of books um, so that it'll stay standing up like this and I'll get a big book like this and they'll just kind of stay standing up I guess you could clip them together if you wanted to no, if, even if my, I don't even know where my great big binder clip disappeared off to you. But, um, yeah. And I just leave it like this for a long time and let it get very happy. All right? Now, when I'm off camera here in a few minutes, I will clip it back together ugh, and leave it. But I'm going to, let's pretend <laughs> that we've waited. Ah three or four hours overnight, whatever. And then I'm gonna come through and very gently, so I don't mess up my cover. I'm gonna pull off these binder clips. And then I'm gonna look at my beautiful journal that I've made. Wow, doesn't it look great? Let's see, and I'm gonna be careful because we're pretending that I let it dry. But now we have this very chunky journal we've given this reader's digest condensed anthology book whatever it is a new life i have all those papers to play with that were the guts and we have this beautiful new journal that we're going to get to work in this is one of sylvia's papers isn't that pretty so if you like this let me know if you're going to try to make a journal with a hidden spine I would love to hear about it. Um, this one, when I get it decorated and lots of pretty treasures, it's probably gonna get very fluffy. But this would be a good one for somebody to collage in. There's plenty of um, places to write. Um, again, to add other papers, flips, pockets, you name it. This is gonna be a, a wonderful treasure when it's all decorated and put together. All right, I'm going to clip it back together and let it rest. I hope you guys have a great day and you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much. Until next time.